Easy e was the first person ever who wasn't afraid to stand up to Suge Knight. Suge tried to destroy my record company. So right now we're getting everything back together and we finna come out, you know, fully loaded. It all started because of Dr. Dre, who was dissatisfied with his financial position at Ruthless Records. It is reported that Dr. Dre scheduled a meeting with Easy, but never showed up to the meeting at all. Instead, Shug Knight showed up, threatening the member of NWA. Dre wasn't there. Oh, Dre wasn't there at all. Nah. Dre set it up, though. Did, did Easy get beat up like the movie nah, show? Nah, hell no. Nah. No. They didn't touch him. The Keefe D said that Easy e had all the Compton Crips behind him. Of and course. And Suge wouldn't touch him. Of course. You're going to sign these, releasing Dre and DOC from Ruthless. And Eric was, if he walked between my legs, excuse my friends, people probably would think he was my penis. I gotta kill this motherfucker, show up night. No, you're not gonna do that. Jerry Heller talked him out of the idea, but he later said he regretted not letting him go on with it. I should have let him kill him. Yeah. You know, he would have. I would have done the world a favor. He would have done it for sure. BG Knockout recounted the story of how he met Suge Knight at the Billboard ceremony. I see Suge kind of trying to press easy. So me and my brother jumped up, ran up there like, what's happening? Suge was like, yeah, outside. We gonna see what's happening outside. They came back to the hood. They brought straps for everybody. So we went outside, everybody was strapped up. So we got outside, we like, Suge, what's happening? Like, he was like, man, I ain't tripping on that shit. It's like, all right. As a result, Dr. Dre got what he wanted. A studio, money, etc and started working with artists like Snoop Dogg and Tupac. To an extent, Pac's arrival at Death Row influenced Dr. Dre's decision to leave the label because they had different creative approaches. Pac wanted to spit out track after track, yet Dr. Dre is a perfectionist in this regard. Aside from that, Dre didn't like the environment at Death Row, which was quite tense at the time, as was shown in the movie. And y'all ain't here acting like y'all on motherfucking vacation. I got Pac in the next motherfucking room. Grinding, man. Working. Dr. Dre made the decision to leave Death Row. And since he didn't want any conflicts, he agreed to leave with empty pockets and create his own label called Aftermath. I said, Jimmy, when you want him, he can go with you, but he has to leave with the shirt on his back. At the end of the day, everybody knows Dre's a home. One particular story was recounted in the documentary, The Death Row Chronicles. Dre took uh, those masters with him and Suge was really pissed off. Suge tried to intimidate the producer, but nothing came of it. Suge Knight was angered by the success of Aftermath. When Dre was at the height of what he was doing at Aftermath, he just really was so focused on, you know, fuck him. But later, another reason became known as to why Dre decided to leave. As Dre said in an interview, if you get scammed once, it's their fault. If you get scammed a second time, it's your fault. Nearly two decades later, Dre filed a lawsuit against his former label, alleging that they owed him over $3 million in unpaid royalties. Legal documents alluded that Dre believed there to be a discrepancy in the payments he received from Death Row Records and that they'd yet to honor a bonus from records sold while the label was in bankruptcy. Now, let's move on to Snoop Dogg. The beef between Pac and Biggie was in full swing, and Tupac and Suge didn't like that Snoop was still hanging out with the guys from Bad Boy Records. Snoop recounted how they were once on a flight, and no one spoke to him. I was having conversations and doing all kinds of things, saying nothing to me. Pac, you going to Vegas to the fight? I said, Psh. Then came the day that changed everything for Tupac and for Death Row as well. Tupac was killed, and Snoop fell deep into depression not knowing what would happen next. He did, however, understand that this shit needed to end. And generally speaking, he was just advocating for peace. In 1996, Knight was in jail for violating his parole during a shooting in Las Vegas. Snoop wanted to end the conflict with Bad Boy Records and wanted to ask Suge what he thought about it. Fuck the bitch ass niggas. That's the word I got back. So it made me feel like fucked up because it's like, you see me trying to reach out and show love, and this is the message that you've seen. After that, Snoop had to hire security to protect him from Suge, as he was trying to kill him. He wanted action when I was in the blind, when I didn't have no help, right. when I didn't have no team, right. and when he could stack a team. I was working against the devil, and through the grace of God, Master P. Master P called Suge and tried to solve the issue, 
saying that he wasn't afraid. What you want for Snoop? Because everybody else was scared of that nigga. Right. Right. Everybody, that's when Suge Knight was the monster, the right. boogeyman. Right. Suge responded, saying that it's not about that. It's about respect. But if you want to talk about business, we will talk about business. Master P gave millions to Suge to release Snoop Dogg, who ultimately became a member of the No Limit label from his contract. Master P became Snoop's Superman as he not only saved his career, but also his life. Next, Snoop Dogg released a track in which he dissed his former producer. This nigga's a bitch like his wife. Suge Knight's a bitch and that's all my life. After Suge got out of prison, he called Master P to meet up. Oh, you say, say Cal ain't big enough for me, him, and, and uh, Puff. Well, I say, when you moving? Because I just bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> Master P was definitely not afraid of Suge Knight, but Snoop Dogg was having mixed feelings about the conflict. Who spoke with Suge Knight recently, who said he used to be a superstar and now he's just a no-limit soldier. What do you say to that? He used to be a CEO, now he's just an inmate. Despite the fact that he dissed him, it's hard to say that Snoop wasn't afraid of Suge. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. In an interview with Big Naz, Marshall's former bodyguard, he said that Suge and Eminem first met in 2001 at the Source Awards. He saw the young and confident Slim Shady getting into a verbal altercation with the guys in the red shirts. And they said, What is this death row about? This death row life? Death row, what does it got to do with him? He said, hey man, Suge sent him a message. What was Eminem saying during all this? He was like, man, I'm oh, shit. Em oh, was oh, like, this motherfucker's oh. trying to kill us, man. They, what are they trying to do? What do, they, what do they want? I don't understand. What do they want? They want you to sign with them instead of, instead of being with Dre. Anyway, Suge Knight is far from being an Eminem fan. What do you think of Eminem? Is that, is that, what do you think of white rap? Really from the ghetto, no. and you really doing those things you rapping about, you talking about, I can respect that. Right. If somebody else from writing your rhymes, uh, somebody else, is you telling somebody else's story, that really don't mean nothing to me. The security guard also revealed how a famous boss of a record label tried to harm Eminem at a concert in Hawaii. When the plane landed, they were greeted by 20 policemen and told that Suge Knight's people were here. 40 cows and magazines and clips and Velcro from the bulletproof vest being put on. So you go from vacation mode to beast mode. It went from vacation mode to beast mode real quick, man. Vacation was over at that point. Yep, you gotta protect yourself, man. And later, when 50 Cent was filming the music video for the In The Club banger, Suge Knight burst into the video shoot. Suge came in with 30 Mexicans, like mm -hmm. you said. Which is weird. Okay, it was like, Shug's outside! Shug's outside! Everybody like, Shug's outside! He was running, dropping shit. Pshug! Light like, man, everybody going, pow! I'm in front of the camera like this. 50, 50 was like, what's up, man? What you want to do? And bang him. And Shug looked at him, and he took a puff of cigar, and he blew it out, and he did like this, and he left. Eminem, Eminem came back with the vest. Yeah, Eminem was outside with him. Shout out to Eminem. Dre wasn't outside, 50 wasn't outside, but Eminem was outside. <laughs> Sometime later at the Vibe Awards, Suge Knight was with Irv Gotti, with whom 50 also has a conflict. Tony Yayo recounted what his friend did. And 50 being the genius he is, told James Cruz, go buy 15 knives. In 2004, the game and Suge Knight clashed, as the game recalls the incident. I've been face to face with Suge, with guns drawn on both sides said the Born to Rap artist on Power 106 FM in Los Angeles. Suge rolled up on me one time after the Vibe Awards after party with like 60 gangsters. He wanted to press for something I said in my song about him, which I said it because I'm from Compton. I'm really from Compton, and I felt like Death Row and Suge and that whole era took so many lives that didn't get mentioned in the city. A couple of those was friends and big homies. So I said a few things about Suge that he didn't like, and they rolled up on me. I, I drew my gun on all of them, yeah. and I held, I, you know, I held my, I held my own. And yeah. from that day forward, <laughs> it was nothing but respect with Suge. Has Suge ever gotten punched in the face? Yes, that also happened. Generally speaking, Suge was representing a producer. His name is Detail, and Suge said that Akon owed Detail money. Akon was like, "No, it's not really that black and white. There's more to it," and he explains that. Detail was signing Akon, but when Akon signed with Detail, Detail was still working with Ray J, and Ray J was working with Suge. Suge told Akon, since you've signed with Detail, you should know that he owes Ray J 25K. 
Akon called Ray J to make sure this was right, and when it was confirmed, Akon told Ray J that when the next Akon album produced by Detail will be released, all the sales profits will go straight to Ray J until the debt is covered. So Ray J will get his 25K from Akon sales. Everyone was in on this agreement, Suge included. But like a month later, Suge approached Akon in the club, demanding the money. This obviously weirded out Akon as he reminded Suge of the agreement. Suge agreed again, but he added a new detail. He said, Ray J and I are 50-50 partners. Why don't you just directly pay me from the album sales and I'll pay Ray J his part? Akon refused. He said, no, I'll pay Ray J because we owe him money, not you. Ray J can pay you your cut of the money, not me. All was cool until like a month later when Suge approached Akon again in a club. He was drunk and asked for the money again. Akon made fun of him and was like, are you broke? Why are you insisting on getting like 12.5? Suge denied being broke but said that the way things work in this business is that you need fast money. You can't wait so long to be paid your debt. Akon said he'll see what he can do and how he can speed up the process. That following week, I'm throwing this huge party at the W. Yo, Con, we good? I said, yeah, we good, nigga. Which I want to drink, whatever, just, you know. He said, no, 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 but damn, I'm talking about with the money. I said, God damn, sure, really? <laughs> 12,500. Man, we have part, nigga, we party. Akon said that he would not receive money today, but everything would soon be resolved. As a result, Suge told him this. He said something about, I have to pay a toll when I come to LA and that my mom won't be able to come to LA. Next, Akon's then manager, Robert Ja Carnes Jr. intervened, telling Suge to calm down and that he would get his money. But if Knight wants to settle this with a fight, then they can do it right now. Suge replied, bastard, I'm not fighting. I'll have your mother and all your family kill. Eventually, one of Suge Knight's homies was about to pull out the gun, but Thomas 2 T's Anderson Jr. knocked him out. Ja hooked off on Suge. And knocked him out. And Suge fell down in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> ja was charged with one count of felony aggravated assault due to the severity of the victim's injuries. And Thomas 2 T's Anderson Jr. was arrested on suspicion of assault and disorderly conduct. Finally, Akon confessed Knight actually snitched on Ja and was forced to pay him an undisclosed amount of money to stop Knight from sending Ja to prison. Suge did more than just press charges, Akon said. He did more than sue. He did what everybody's mad at 6ix9ine about. I'm just saying, he did what everybody mad at 6ix9ine about. I had to pay off Suge to drop the charges for Ja because I couldn't see my man going to jail for that shit. Ja had just got out. Let us know in the comments what other rappers you are aware of who are not afraid of Suge Knight. And by the way, I recommend you watch this video about Suge. Bye everyone!